We sometimes say that a nib is the heart of the fountain pen. If that's the case, I'll be showing a lot of hearts today. I'll be covering pretty nibs and then nibs made of different kinds of metals and then some pretty crazy nibs. And somewhere in there, I'll be giving away a 14 karat gold nib pen. This is the Mont Blanc Special Edition Agatha Christie, and it was lent to me by my friend CY. He's lately become a bit of a Mont Blanc nut, but you can't disagree with the fact that it has the most beautiful nib. It's an 18 karat gold nib with the snake matching the snake on the clip. The Japanese pen shop, Hachimonjia, has had a couple of pens that have sold out within minutes of releasing them. And one of them was this Kubo Sakura pen with a beautiful nib of a particular kind of sakura or cherry blossom. Instead of a picture of the cherry blossom straight on showing its star shape, it is a picture of the side of a special kind of droopy cherry blossom. And it's unique and beautiful. I've been thinking about selling this pen because I'm kind of getting over a lot of the sparkly pens. But there's just one giant reason I can't because it has a killer nib. The pen is called Moonlit Sakura and that's exactly what the nib shows. The moon peeking through some clouds over some sakura or cherry blossoms. It's hard to part with. Or this pen called Hoshi Mizora, which means starry sky. It has a compass on the nib. It <laughs> being a pilot, it was important to me to have this nib, even though the pen really doesn't do anything for me. Some nibs are cool because they have the logo from the store on the nib. This is Penhouse's logo with a feather and the word pent on it. And some are whimsical, like this Bungu Box dandelion pen, which has a nib with a dandelion on it. This is Kyo no Oto's anniversary pen, and it has their logo of a bird on the nib, along with the matching finial. The Japanese pen group Wagner makes a special pen every year, and they always have cool nibs. This one is from 2015, and the Wagner Group is one of the reasons I have so many 3776s. But they do other pens too, and this is an FWI Bronze Age, and it has a goldfish on the nib. Even something as simple as a Pilot Prera having a special insignia nib gets me all happy. Or you can go the opposite direction and get yourself a faceless nib with no insignia on it at all. As far as gold nibs, we have 21 karat gold nibs, which is basically 87.5 gold when you're looking at the 24 karat gold system. And that's why 21 karat gold nibs have 875 printed on them. And then 18 karat gold nibs have 750 on them because they're 75% gold. However, this Italian Santini nib has 18 KT written on it for 18 karat gold. This is a vintage Pilot Custom 72. I think it was made somewhere like around 1986 or so, but it has this pretty kind of textured body and then the really pretty band on it. It has an interesting HF nib or hard fine which you can't find anymore now. The closest modern pen to it is probably the Pilot Custom 74 with a posting nib on it or PO. This one is courtesy of my friend Jacob. Both of these have 585 written on them for 14 karat gold. And from that, you can see it's 58.5% gold, which means 14 karat gold is only slightly more than half gold, even though we call it solid gold. 
These nibs are great for giving a fine, consistent line. But then, prowling around on the internet, I found a 10 karat gold pen. It's the Fuluwen F2003 Unique Rhombus Cheetah Graphics Pen. I thought it was interesting because as gold prices went up, even uh, jewelry makers decided to start using some 10 karat gold for some of their jewelry and even some sterling silver for things like diamonds. So yeah, gold prices have kind of forced some things to happen that we don't normally see. 10 karat gold is 41.66% gold, which should mean a marking of 417, but for some reason the markings on this nib is 420. Uh, I'm not really sure why. This nib is less than 50% gold, and it's a very tiny nib, which probably explains the price of $38 for this pen. I'll cover in a future video why gold nibs are not inherently better than any other kind of nib. It's a slip cap, very thin pen, but it wrote very well and very smoothly. I was, thought it was a good value at $38. Just for funsies, if you can ever get a hold of one of these lucky 14 karat gold nibs, you might want to check it out. I got this one from a Wingsung 698, and these nibs fit both a Pilot Prera and Pilot Metropolitan, and they're slightly flexible, so now I, this is my Prera with a 14 karat gold semi-soft nib. I got the Wingsung 698 for less than $50. You can learn more about this on my Crazy Pants Pens video. For metals other than stainless steel or gold, this nib is made by Eureka, and it's an argentium silver and platinum nib. Argentium silver is slightly more pure than sterling silver, and it is also much more tarnish resistant. But this combination of platinum and argentium silver makes for a very nice nib. You can learn more about this and see writing samples on my silver nib video. This is the Estherbrook Accutron pen that was generously given to me by a friend of mine, but instead of leaving that nib in, I stuck in a titanium nib from Canwright. I'll talk about this pen more in my next video. You can order these nibs by themselves from Canwright, and this one is supposed to be a flexible nib. And it's flexible in much the way that many nibs call themselves flexible. You have to press really hard and you can see it kind of wrinkles the paper when you do it. Since this Yovo number no. 6 nib unit can fit many pens, this might be an inexpensive way to start your flex journey. Pen BBS caused a feeding frenzy when they released their calligraphy nibs. It was basically seven different kinds of nib units with different grinds or configurations on them. This one is courtesy of Jacob from Foodafan, and it's a number two calligraphy nib, and it looks and writes a lot like an architect nib. I think the number two ended up being a favorite for a lot of people. My pen friend Sophia took really good close-up pictures of all seven of the calligraphy nibs and did extensive writing samples of them. So you may want to check out her Instagram account before you decide which of the calligraphy nibs you may want to purchase. I'll leave her information down below and any other people that I mention in this video. Now let's get to the crazy nibs. This one was made by Ralph of Regalia Writing Labs, and it almost looks like a piece of jewelry. Ralph was kind of the granddaddy of the small nib meisters to break out and start stacking nibs and flexing nibs and making nibs a lot more interesting. As you can see here, this side is a fine cursive italic. It makes for really beautiful tiny writing, but then flip it over and all of a sudden now you got yourself a big juicy writer. All of his nibs were Yovo number no. 6 nibs, so you could use them in a variety of pens, and he really made the pen world a lot more exciting. 
We miss you, Ralph. It would be nice to see you back. An exciting nibmeister to come out of Ireland is Jose Munueta. This is his Neonibium nib. It's a soft, stacked nib, and here it is on the side. You can see the notches on the side. And Jose names a lot of his nibs after elements in the atomic table, which <laughs> makes it difficult to pronounce some of his nibs. This is a soft nib, not a flex nib, and it lays down a lot of ink because it's stacked. The thing about stacked nibs is they can hold a lot of ink, a lot of ink right there at the feed and in between the nibs. The ink I have in there is a very touchy, slightly chromo shading ink that's kind of dry and kind of like balls up on the paper. It's called Hai Kabari Hime from Tono and Limbs. It's a beautiful ink and I really like it and I'll show some pictures of it dried here in a minute, but it is touchy. But in this nib, all the ink is kind of pulled up right there near the paper and I have no problems writing with it at all. That's something you may want to try with some of these chromo shading inks is a stacked nib. Here you can see the ink kind of pulling up, but also it's drawing away from the edges and that's just one of those touchy kind of inks. But this pen brought out its very subtle and beautiful chromo shading. This is the Edison Extended Mina, and I consider it a very classic pen. But it's also one of the few pens that I have a number five nib unit in. And in this nib, Jose went just a little bit crazier. It's a number five nib and it's 2.9 millimeters in width. And looking at it at first, you're thinking, okay, it looks like a really big stub. Yeah, not quite. Jose layered five nibs onto this nib. It kind of hurts my eyes to look at it. And it's a gorgeous writer. It just really lays the ink down very smoothly without any like overflow. There's not ink like dribbling all out of the, the pen at all. It just writes really well. And what you this is suited for is covering large areas with ink or block writing. If you're looking to get sheen out of an ink, you're gonna get it with this pen. I'll speed up the next clip by 20 so you can see how easily I can lay down large amounts of ink. As many of you know, I occasionally lean very heavy into the weird, and Jose does not disappoint. He mentioned in his IG post that this nib is totally reasonable and not stupid. It's a monster music nib. He used two nibs to make a four-tined music nib and calls it the molybdenum. Yeah, he had to use those chemical names, but you can also call it the mosaic nib. I call it the shovel. The cool thing about this nib is not only does it lay down enormous amounts of ink, it does the thin and thick lines just like an italic. And I'm not sure if it's because it has more breather holes or more tines, but the ink is very ready there at the nib, and then it handles chromo shading inks very well. I'll leave Jose's information in the notes, but you really need to check out his IG. He's got so many more crazy nibs on there. And here's the chromo shading came out lovely because of the very good ink flow in the nib. Now, if you have a little more change lying around, you can get gold stack nibs from our very own crazy nibmeister here in Tokyo, CY from Tokyo Station Pens. This is a triple stack sailor and he stacks gold nibs from all three of the major companies here in Japan. And this is a double stacked pilot. And this is a triple stacked pilot music nib. And this is a double stacked platinum nib. And this is a triple stacked platinum nib. And this is a double stacked platinum music nib. 
and this bad boy is a triple stacked platinum music nib. Now these nibs are going to be proportionately more expensive because like on this nib he's using three gold nibs. And this one is a flexible music nib with an overfeed and see why did it just because he could. And I'll show a couple other nib modifications from CY in just a bit. Now let's talk about flex. This is a steel 1.5 stub nib that's flexible from Regalia Riding Labs. The nice thing is that it can act like a stub or an italic with the thicker lines going straight up and down and the thinner lines going horizontally, but it can still flex. This nib does not take the extraordinary amount of pressure that many uh, nibs nowadays, steel nibs that say that they're flexible. It's quite soft, but they're hard to come by and only on the secondary market. So I had been on a search for a modern flex nib that didn't require you to really crank down on it when you were flexing. And then along came the secretary of the flex from Pen Realm. You can see on the sides it has cutouts and then it has a cross cutout in the center. And it was just an awesome flex nib. As you can see here, I am not applying so much pressure that it's wrinkling the paper. It's a very light pressure and very nice flex. And if it ends up like railroading a little bit, you just wait a second and the ebonite feed will catch up with you. I don't like using vintage flex pens because I'm always changing the ink and I was having to replace the sack and mess around too much with these older pens. And see why helped me out by putting two of my vintage flex nibs into the Opus 88. This is my Edward Todd number no. 5 gold nib in an Opus 88 with private reserve black cherry. It flexes as it always has, and you can see the old feed still is being used with the nib. And it's really handy because I can do flex writing with a vintage nib, but still not have the big maintenance problems you have with it. And this is my wall, ever sharp, in an Opus 88. And again, with the original feed, I have a tendency to write sideways, especially for these videos, and sometimes that feed just slips around a bit. Now I know some collectors might cringe at the fact that we're kind of messing around with history or whatever, but these were not collectible pens, and now I actually use the nibs instead of just having the pens sit around in storage. But the winner, winner, chicken dinner of all these nibs is this one. It's in a pen body made by Bone Crusher 7 Studios in this beautiful clear green acrylic. Hiding inside of this pen is the ultimate nib for me. This was given to me by a very generous pen friend. Thank you. This pen color is the perfect matchup with Ido Shizuku's new ink, Sui Gyoku. That's what I filled it with. The nib is the 14 karat gold Flex Commander made by Kirk Spear from Pen Realm. I've written with a lot of vintage Flex and some that are considered wet noodles. And while this may not be an actual wet noodle, it is probably very close. It takes a very light hand and it's a fairly advanced nib. You just can't grab it and start cranking on it. People are missing the point if they're just looking at the difference between the widest part and the thinnest part of your stroke. What makes this a wonderful nib is the very, very light pressure you need to get it to flex. It is smooth and brush-like and just a real joy to write with. It's a juicy writer and it's really hard for me to get it to railroad if I'm writing at normal speeds. It has side cutouts, very long slender tines, a slit all the way up through the middle and two breather holes. I'm so impressed with this nib that I'm calling it right now. 
This nib was the single most interesting and breakout thing that happened this year in the fountain pen world. While super flexi nibs of the past and vintage pens were made flexible not just by their shape but also by the metallurgy, this one here is flexible by its architecture, its construction, and I think it took some real thought and some real skill and an in-depth understanding of flex to come up with this nib. So if you're really into flex, you'll need to take a real close look at this nib and pay attention when you're using it. It's like a sports car. And now I'll do a quick rundown of a hodgepodge of interesting nibs. Kendall, a friend from Instagram, gave me a heads up on these nibs. You can find them online if you Google monster nibs. They're nibs where the tine was kind of folded over and then made into this corner here. And they come without a feed. Kendall uses the number five FPR feed for their flex nibs. And I just jammed in an FNF ebonite feed. It kind of slipped around every once in a while, but it pretty much well worked. You need to use the pen where the edge comes flat with the paper and then you can lie down really loads of ink and it works much like an architect nib, but just a really fat architect nib. Sometimes it can be a little bit touchy if you don't hold the nib just right, but when you do, like I said, you can lay down lots of ink and it's really good for like when you want to see sheening on an ink or if you're looking for you know, a really interesting chromo shade. Look how much ink that lays down. Kakimori came up with kind of a metal glass pen replacement. You can use it in a standard nib holder. This one is courtesy of Jacob of Fudafan and he just stuck it in a straight up Tachikawa handle. And it looks a lot like a glass pen nib, but it's this one is made of stainless steel. They have other ones also made of brass. And it's a dip pen, and the nice thing is that you can use it like a glass pen, but not worry about it breaking or anything. The really useful part is that it'll make different widths of lines depending on the angle that you hold the nib at. The higher the angle, the thinner the line will be. You can go all the way up to just about 90 degrees. At 90 degrees, it just doesn't write. I think this will be a very useful tool for people who like to do ink swatches and then also write in that same color. Kakimori ships internationally and you can also buy these at Yoseka Stationery. This nib was made by Jim Crawford from the Pen Sloth. The nib has a silver overfeed and in the overfeed is a three millimeter amethyst cabochon. And being Inky Rocks, I really needed to get this. Yaching Style makes ink where she uses as part of the pigment for the ink, crushed up gemstones. I have one that is turquoise with crushed up turquoise in it and this one is amethyst with crushed up amethyst in it so of course I needed to use that ink with this nib. It seemed kind of weird writing with it but it wrote beautifully with both that ink and that giant amethyst cabochon hanging out there and I had no problem fitting the nib into the cap of the pen. Annabelle Hillar, who is the nib specialist at Applebum, is now experimenting with these nibs. She wanted to try to make stacked nibs without actually cutting up another nib and making it all out of one sheet of metal. The advantage that Annabelle has is that she went to goldsmithing school and she can make these nibs herself from scratch. Because of her background, she can mess around with, say, the softness of the nib, or as you can see in this picture, put a jewel in the nib or hammer the edges. She is experimenting with both gold and silver nibs. 
These are all kind of prototypes and she's not selling nibs right now, but plans to in the future. This is her harmonic nib series. And if you'd like to, you can go to her Instagram account and there's a link where you can sign up to be on a waiting list for when she starts selling these nibs. But the killer nib, the absolute heart stopper is this one. It's a hammered 14 karat gold number eight nib with a 3.5 millimeter stub. Last year, Annabelle's pen, the Symphony, made it into my top pens of 2020. And here she is again with just this beautiful, beautiful nib. Of course, it's in the top nibs of 2021. This is the Sailor Promenade. A little while ago, I went to Sailor's Ancora store and they had a fair there. And since the promenade is being discontinued, they had it on for sale. And it's a 14 karat gold nibbed pen. You can check out my video about the Sailor's Ancora store. All you need to do to enter this giveaway is just go over to my Instagram account and put a comment on my most current post, which is of the Bone Crusher 7 Studios green pen. I'll use a random comment picker and announce the winner on my next video. This pen will come in an Ancora branded box and I'll also include a converter. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate maybe a subscription or a share. And I'll leave you with the rest of the video for Annabelle Hillar's Hammered Gold Nib.